Speaking of that state of democracy, we'll turn our attention to our state of Wisconsin. The Center for Communication and Civic Renewal uh, commissioned a survey of about 2,800 uh, Wisconsinites right before uh, the 2022 midterm elections. Uh, we have been going through that data uh, very quickly and, and carefully over the last few days, uh, led by uh, many of our wonderful graduate students who mostly are sitting right uh, over in the front. We'll recognize them all um, a little more formally uh, at the end of this. Uh, but now um, we're delighted to share some of the results of, of that survey and for the beginning of that sharing, I'll turn it over to Devon. Thank you, Mike. So in the Center for Communication and Civic Renewal, we have been focused on the state of Wisconsin. It's been our um, uh, focus in three respects. We've done a large number of in-depth interviews, over 200 of citizens of the state throughout the state to understand how they're talking about politics and thinking about politics. We've then done large scale computational analysis and harvesting of social media content, news media content to understand the communication ecology of the state. And then as Mike said, we've also been doing public opinion polling and we've been doing that going back to 2018, in 2020, and now in 2022. Some of that research from 2018 is summarized in this book, Battleground. Uh, Lou Friedland, the lead author of it, is with us. Lou, if you wouldn't mind raising your hand. Uh, the esteemed Lou Friedland. Um, again, this is probably about eight or 10 years of work in terms of synthesizing what we've been doing in the center. And it's not a happy picture about the state of the Wisconsin communication ecology and, and what we just collected potentially uh, portends even worse. So what do we see among the citizens of the state of Wisconsin? Well, an overwhelmed citizenry who don't seek out the news and in fact are expressing greater and greater news fatigue, especially on the political right. We saw a little bit of a respite from that in 2022. But in terms of this notion of news finds me, the idea that we don't have to seek out the news, if it's important, it'll get to me. We're seeing people who are more and more disinclined to seek out journalism. Instead, they encounter it over social media. And Wisconsinites' trust of news is extraordinarily partisan. If you look at the blue marks that are kind of high in this bar along the left-hand side, they're all for liberal-leaning media. Those are trusted by Democrats. If you look at the bars that are slightly higher along uh, 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 in terms of red, those are all more right-leaning media. Wisconsinites' trust of news depends on the source. And what's really amazing is if we look over time, we're seeing diminishing trust of news across all sources, on the political left and the political right. So a declining sense that news gives us relevant information and that we should be seeking it out. Now, what does that news diet matter? And this is data more from our book. When we see the combination of news media and partisanship, news media use can sometimes cross cut partisanship where strong, you know, Democrats who consume a lot of conservative media start to change their attitudes in the direction to support conservative viewpoints, and vice versa. So it's not just our ideology, but in combination with our media use, it's really driving a lot of what we see in terms of polarized politics. We see this not just for issues like the Affordable Care Act, but also for state economic attitudes. And again, this is a recurrent phenomenon where it's certainly our ideology matters, but a lot of it is also our media diet. And in this state, that media diet is extraordinarily uh, divided. And as a result, one of the things we're also seeing is that Wisconsin's trust in each other is shaped by a combination of partisanship and geography. If you ask people who live in, uh, 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 who are Democrats versus Republicans, if they trust people who live in urban areas, there's a vast difference with Democrats expressing the greatest trust for people who live in urban areas and, and Republicans less so. If you do the same thing for uh, suburban areas, it's the independents who are slightly depressed compared to the both Republicans and the Democrats. But if you go for rural areas, it's the Republicans who identify with those folks the most. It's geographically based, and this goes back to work by people like Kathy Kramer, who talks about rural consciousness. 
One of the things that we found is a lot of Republicans in the state identify more with those rural communities. We also see a pretty stiff divide in terms of trust in institutions and administrations. If you look from the political left to right, here we have trust in the US Supreme Court, trusted by the political light, not by the left, and declined precipitously. If you look at this, this is a, 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 a trust in uh, um, the U.S. Congress. Again, depends on who's in charge. If, you're, if, you're, if your side is in charge of Congress, you trust. If they're not, you're, you're uh, uh, less trusting of them. In terms of trust in the police, extraordinarily part of the divide and becoming more so. And then this is trust in the Trump administration, one of the most divided, and then this is trust in the Biden administration almost equally divided in the opposite direction. I'm going to turn it over to Mike, who's going to talk about how we compare to other states and the rest of the US. With that happy picture, one thing we've also done in the Center for Communication and Civic Renewal is compare Wisconsin to other swing states. So one thing we found is that we're number one which is to say Wisconsin is the most polarized of the swing states when it comes to different kinds of attitudes about political groups. And so the top row are uh, Republican respondents, the bottom row are Democrats, and we're asking them about how much they trust, in this particular data, the Trump administration uh, back in 2018 and 2020, large corporations, local television news, journalists of the state, and labor unions. And you can see the spread is just wider in Wisconsin, of greater or, or less trust as compared to North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Ohio. The same is true for social trust of urban residents, uh, people who are immigrants, um, people of other races than the respondents in, this, in the survey, people of uh, other religions, uh, and people who live in rural areas. And so once again, just the, the divide is greater in Wisconsin than in any other swing state. How do these divisions manifest themselves? Normally, we think of politics as somewhat divorced from the part and parcel of daily life. We tend not to think that our politics might affect who we talk to uh, at work or who we're willing to have a barbecue with in the neighborhood. But we have found that closing off of political talk is higher in Wisconsin than in other swing states. And more than 60% of Wisconsinites have said they've stopped talking politics with somebody because they disagree about politics. We first started asking this question around the time of Act 10, when that was passed during Governor Walker's administration. Then it was about 33%. And that was a very polarized time. People remember just down the street at the state capitol, thousands of people protesting, um, lawmakers having to be brought in uh, with, with armed guards uh, at, at, at times. Very contentious time. It's more contentious now in that some people are just saying, I don't want to talk politics with other people anymore. We're slightly higher than the rest of the nation. So another thing we did in 2022 is we conducted a sample of, of folks in Wisconsin, and then we conducted a national sample as well, asking them the same kinds of questions that we asked the people in Wisconsin. Wisconsin is slightly worse at, at closing off political talk, about three or four percentage points higher uh, than folks around the nation. Closing off of political talk is on the rise in Wisconsin, so we've asked this question since 2018. And even though it was around 60% in 2018, it continues to inch up a little bit uh, each year. And so we see this problem getting uh, a little bit worse uh, amongst Democrats, uh, independents, and Republicans. Um, there was a little bit of a respite for independents uh, in, in 2020, but otherwise generally on the rise. Democrats in Wisconsin are a little bit more likely to close off political talk than Republicans are. And so we've seen a partisan difference there, just as we saw in some of the other areas uh, Devon was talking about. And it tends to happen most often uh, in families. So when we close off political talk, it's with our, our families, our, our brothers and sisters and, and, and or kids or parents or uncles and aunts uh, as compared to coworkers. Coworkers tend to be a much more diverse political environment, which is sort of interesting. You think you, you don't get to pick your coworkers, uh, but you do you know, often pick who you partner with and you, know, you have a much closer relationship with family, but it's the closing off of family that is really driving uh, a, a lot of these uh, conversations in Wisconsin. I remember um, a quote from one of the, the people 
we did in-depth interviews with, as Devon, when he kicked off, was talking about how we've interviewed several hundred people, not in public opinion surveys, but in lengthy conversations about how they engage in civic life. And one woman said, who was a, a supporter of, of then Governor Walker, said, well, I have the cooties real bad because I like the governor and my brother hates him and I haven't talked to him in six years. This is the kind of, like, this is not what we tend to think about when we talk about political difference and being able to bridge divides. And th those sorts of things are also are evident in this survey data. Now, one, one place where we're not worse is the over, just the outright ending of friendships. So if we say we don't want to talk politics, maybe we'll talk about the Badgers or the Packers or the weather. These are things we can talk about and Wisconsinites do. And we don't close off relationships at a level that's any worse uh, than that happens around uh, the rest of the country. But one in five of us have done this, both nationally and in the state, just outright ended uh, a familial relationship. Uh, once again, Democrats more likely than Republicans uh, to have done this uh, in Wisconsin. We also uh, are trying to look for uh, kernels of hope in civic life. And so in 2022, we asked, have you restarted conversations with somebody that you stopped talking politics with? Have, have tensions cooled? Have we tried to come back and, and restart conversations? Not many people do it, um, but partisans are a little bit more likely to do it than independents. And so a little heartening, at least, that people who do care deeply about politics are a little bit more likely to engage in a restarting uh, of conversation. But who are those conversations with? Once again, our theme about how our geography in our state, our media use in our state, and our partisanship in our state interact to drive a lot of factors that, that happen here. The further to the right you go, um, the, more, uh, the, the more Republican someone's identification, the further to the left, the, the more they identify with the Democrats. And the higher we go, the more likely uh, those people are to talk to a Democrat. So not surprisingly, the Democrats are more likely to talk politics with Democrats. But there's also geographic divides. Suburban Republicans more likely to talk to Democrats. Outstate uh, people who live in the outstate are more likely uh, to, to do the same. When it comes to talking with Republicans, once again, the, as so many of these figures do, they reverse. But we see a difference in Madison. So in Madison, where there are not many Republicans, they do seem to find each other uh, and, and talk politics uh, if, if, they, if they can. How do these sorts of things manifest themselves when it comes to attitudes we have about democracy more broadly? We've found strong partisan differences in the idea that Republicans see traditional views being silenced much more than Democrats and independents do. Um, Republicans are more likely to say the traditional way of American life is disappearing so fast we mean, may need violence to save it. Um, that's the middle column. But one thing to point out is these are on five-point scales, and even though there are more Republicans who say maybe we need violence to save democracy, it's still under the midpoint, which is to say people, regardless of party, still oppose the idea of political violence. There are partisan differences in who supports it, but on average, people are, are against it. And then the same with the third question, uh, or patriots have to take the law into their own hands. Big partisan differences, but still the average is below of the midpoint of support for all three of our groups. This seems to suggest that the other side, in the minds of Wisconsin partisans, are dangerous, evil, not to be trusted. And if people are dangerous, evil, and not to be trusted, perhaps they're not to be compromised with. But in Wisconsin, people strongly support the idea of political compromise. We ask our participants, should politicians compromise to get something done, or should they stick to their principles even if nothing gets accomplished. And overwhelmingly, they say compromise to get something done. And that's a bipartisan attitude. There are partisan differences. Democrats are more in favor of compromise than Republicans. But Republicans, independents, and Democrats, all over 60% favor legislative compromise to uh, stagnation on the, the holding of, of, of principles. Oops, I went backwards, there we go. And then uh, the last thing we'll talk about are some attitudes about elections and other political behaviors, and then Devon will offer a couple of quick uh, conclusions uh, before we get ready for our, our, our panel of our invited academics. We asked folks both uh, in our national sample and our state sample, how confident are you that your vote's going to get counted in the election? Wisconsinites share confidence that the election uh, will be accurate. 
might be nice if there were more people in that far right column where we, people were completely confident, but um, strong majorities are at least somewhat confident and there aren't very many people who are, are not at all confident. There are partisan differences, uh, once again, a uh, the theme of the day. In this case, Wisconsin Democrats are more confident in the count than are Republicans or independents. When we talk about elections, we have a lot of oxygen sucked up by conversations about election fraud. But the way that our elections are conducted in Wisconsin that need policy repair actually relate more to people's access to the ballot box. And things that we found in our own research are that the wait times at the polls, that's the figure on the left, are uh, twice as high or almost three times as high for Hispanic Wisconsinites as compared to everyone else. And the commute time to the polls is, is um, about 30% higher for black Wisconsinites as compared to Wisconsinites who aren't black. So if we want to talk election reform, more access to the ballot box, shorter time in line, shorter um, commute to the polls might be ways to talk about rather than uh, election fraud. Um, if you want to read about uh, the good job that folks uh, in Wisconsin who run elections do, uh, Barry Burden, who runs the Elections Research Center, has written a wonderful report uh, about election administration in Wisconsin that you can find on the Elections Research Center website. Do you want to talk about context, or you want me to keep going? I'm on a roll. Keep going. Well, great. You're so, <laughs> never follow Mike. <laughs> We also, uh, in our research, are deeply sensitive to how context matters. And so we've done research that looks at, well, when do people look for help? When might they look across the aisle for a policy solution? And the answer is that when things are bad. When unemployment is high, when a county is losing population, when the average health outcomes in a county are getting worse, partisan polarization diminishes. When things get better, when unemployment is down, when population's growing in the county, when health outcomes are better, we're back to our teams. We're back to the, our, our, our partisan teams. And that happens across a wide variety of issues across the counties of our state. And so a little depressing to know that things have to be terrible for us to look to the other side uh, for help. Where is there agreement? Uh, this is an issue that was near and dear uh, to Bill's heart, as you heard Tony talk about a minute ago. Nonpartisan redistricting. We asked uh, voters in Wisconsin how do you think we should do redistricting in our state? And the most uh, popular answer, whether it's urban, suburban, or rural Democrats, or urban, suburban, or rural Republicans, is a nonpartisan redistricting commission. This is especially notable with the Republicans in our sample because they are aware they are hugely advantaged by the current uh, districting rules where Wisconsin Democrats win roughly 60% of votes in statewide uh, state legislative uh, elections for uh, the State Assembly and State Senate, but end up with 40% of the seats. But both Republicans uh, and Democrats strongly favor a nonpartisan commission um, making the uh, districting lines. This would very likely reduce the advantage that Republicans have in the State Assembly and State Senate, but would not be likely to eliminate majorities of Republicans uh, being the majority party uh, in those groups. We just had an election, and one thing we noticed is that um, we had several candidates at the top of the ticket running in statewide elections, but the partisan voting was not uniform. Governor Evers earned more votes uh, as a Democrat than Mandela Barnes earned in the Senate race, for example. So people are clearly making decisions um, that, or some people are making decisions that vote uh, for folks from both parties. Who does this? People with more diverse information diets. So here, each figure's logic is the same. The further to the right you go, the more homogeneous one's information diet. That is to say, the further to the right, the more Republicans say, I watch Fox News and read Breitbart and the Wall Street Journal, and the more Democrats say, I watch MSNBC and read the Huffington Post. So people who are more ideologically cloistered in their information are on the far right of, each, of, of the figure, and the folks who have a more diverse information diet are on the far left. Almost a 50-50 chance of splitting your ticket if you have a really diverse information diet. In a state where two to six percent split their ticket, that's, a, that's an amazingly large uh, effect. What about conversation? The second figure is about, we ask people, tell us three people you talk politics with the most. The further to the right, all three people are in your party. Um, the further to the left, all three people are, are in the other political party. People who talk to folks who are different than they are are also more likely to split their ticket when they vote. So cross-party conversation, cross 
ideological news consumption leads to more moderate voting behavior. Not all moderation is good, but this does lead uh, to more moderate voting behavior. So I'll leave it to uh, Devon to wrap us up before we take a short break and have our academic panel. Thank you, Mike. So what do we take from this? Um, Wisconsin faces some challenging political terrain. Um, among Wisconsinites, um, you know, we see the rise of avoiding news or letting it find them rather than them seeking it out, especially among Republicans. News trust is partisan and is generally declining across all media forms. News diet cross cuts with partisanship to shape views, and we saw that in the very last slide too, that part of it is our media diet, and that media diet is highly impactful. Information and communication matter. And that is a theme that I think cuts across in the Ballard book through the work we're sharing with you today. And social and institutional trust divides are decidedly along partisan lines. And that's really troubling when we think about, you know, the kind of uh, uh, stress our institutions are under right now and whether or not they can survive. Compared to others, um, we're more polarized on social and institutional trust. Uh, we're more likely to close off political talk with someone, especially among Democrats, and most often with family members. These are personal ties that we're closing off in terms of uh, either sometimes closing off relationships or just clo closing off conversation. And Wisconsin Democrats are also more likely to end relationships over politics. We also see something really troubling in the idea of endorsing extreme views, especially among Republicans, though as Mike said, we're happy to see that those numbers aren't endorsed by a majority. Yet there is that widespread desire for compromise, especially among Democrats, though, again, widely shared, over 60% by everybody. And so, you know, as we consider options across the aisle, we tend to do it when the situation is bad, when we're in, say, a recession, when population in the county is declining. This may be a moment where we can open up that conversation as our economy is struggling a bit, are we more willing to have those uh, efforts to look across the aisle? We'll stop there, and before we go on, though, we need to acknowledge um, this data that you just saw, we got it two days ago. We got it two days ago. We literally crunched these numbers, and the people who helped us do all that are mainly right here, and I would ask you to stand up if your name is on the screen. So please stand up if your name is on the screen. Stand up and be recognized, please including you, Lou. You're up there, too. Thank you. It, it's, this really is, you know, uh, uh, for us, a team sport. We've been, we couldn't do all of this without uh, uh, the work we do with our graduate colleagues and with our emeritus colleagues like Lou. So it's, it's an amazing opportunity. And on Wisconsin, hopefully we find some solutions. Thank you.